Hi, this is Eric. I wanted to spend uh, this video talking about how I enabled a two-speed spindle with a gear changer uh, in Linux CNC on my Okada VM500. So here's a picture of the machine as bought, uh, an old uh, mid-80s uh, Japanese milling machine. It's been a fun project as, as can be. I probably should have bought a newer one, but um, I've, I've sure enjoyed working on this. As I mentioned in my previous videos, it is just really hard to get started with Linux CNC if you don't know how it works already. And then, uh, of course, once you've done it, things look pretty easy. So I want to talk about how we move the spindle. You know, there's this enormous uh, head here. It's got to weigh 2,000 pounds. And uh, the spindle's down here, and then inside here is uh, is the gear changer. I just want to go about talking about how I did it uh, kind of from soup to nuts. So let me show you a picture of how this looks overall so here this is with this with the cladding removed and you can see there's a big seven and a half horsepower motor here and then there are these hydraulic uh, actuators so this is a big one this is for the uh, unclamp uh, this uh, this this uh, piece of electronics here is actually an amplifier for the uh, for the spindle position sense for orient and then the speed changer is right here and it's a little bit hard to see let me make it a little bit bigger um, you can see that you can see that there's this is a um, this is a, a cylinder right here, and essentially when there's hydraulic pressure here, it pushes this down. Hydraulic here pressure here, it pushes it up, and there are these two little sensors here, and they sense that this this uh, metal thing in the middle if, if it's if it's in position or not. So one sensor there on the top, and another sensor there on the bottom. And in fact, let me show you another picture of it. Just one second. Here we go. So you can see this is a kind of an annotated picture of this. This is that same picture from the front that you saw before. And here's the low speed sensor on the top and the high speed sensor on the bottom. And then here's a side picture and you can just see there's these two connectors and then these go um, these go into um, a, a connector here. So this is how this, this is how this is all wired up. I had to go through the whole milling machine like this because I didn't have schematics. And then for the hydraulics here in the back, you can see uh, there are these hydraulic actuators. These are 110 volt solenoids right so ultimately there's 110 volts that goes to the solenoid and that that hits the solenoid and then it um, takes hydraulic pressure and puts it into the thing uh, into the into the into the gear changer and then the control for the solenoids is in this relay bank here this is the relay bank inside the control circuit each one of these is a mechanical relay uh, that can handle either ac or dc power right so ultimately what you do is you hit this relay it it uh, energizes 110 volts, hits the hits the uh, solenoid. The solenoid moves the moves the tester, or moves the moves the spindle, and then you have a sensor if it's in high speed or low speed. So that's how it works mechanically. And then just to give you an idea of how this connects into my system, I'm using the PPMC infrastructure, and this isn't that circuit, but this is a similar one that I had a good drawing of. So there's this card from PPMC that works in there, and this happens to be a there's a solid state relay here that is you know there's essentially two wires, and you can see there's um, you know, I've, I've done all my labeling. Ultimately, when this uh, this pin, PPMC D out number six, is energized, it closes this solid state relay, and then that hits 24 volts to the to the re to the mechanical relay that I showed you just a second ago, which in turn, um, the other side of the relay, uh, that hits 110 volts to the solenoid. The solenoid actuates the cylinder and it moves. Right, so that's how the system works, and that's how that's how all this all these bits work. And so, how do we actually deal with that inside of Linux CNC now that you have an idea of what's happening mechanically? So the first thing you need to do is you need to remap the um, remap the S. So we talked about this in my in my last one for the tool changer, the RS two seven four NGC. Who thought of that name? Um, section you just need to have a remap so s s is the um, is is the g code for speed s 100 is 100 rpms s 0 is 0 and you've got this prolog set speed prolog you've got the ngc file which is set speed which i'll show you in a second and then there's an epilog and then another thing to note to mention is that when you define what physical pins talk to what virtual um, signals you have to define that somewhere and I put that in the tool changer because uh, I had a more complicated tool changer um, program I just put that inside my tool changer binary dot hal and so that's called out as a hal file 
So let's look at that really quickly. And if you guys remember from the last video, so there's the, the outputs, the M64 and M65, and the inputs, which are the M66s. And so let's see if we can find the outputs. Here they are right here. So here's my spindle shift high and spindle shift low. And you know, back if you remember, PPMC D out 02 and 03 are the two. Uh, the one I showed you was six, which was, let's find it, that was uh, tool changer arm retract. Uh, but two and three are for the for the spindle speed high, spindle speed low, and then those map to motion digital out twelve and thirteen. So when I do an M sixty four P thirteen or P twelve, then I hit one of these or the other, and then for the inputs for the sensors, you can see that there's these two D in twenty two and twenty three map to um, map to spindle is high, spindle is low in motion digital, right? So an M sixty six P twelve or P thirteen will read that. Um, We'll read those two signals, right? So, so you start with the peop you start with the any file. You define you remap a a command in the RS two seventy four section. I'm remapping S in this case. You make sure that you have a HAL file in the HAL section that that has the mapping of the physical input or output to a virtual input or output, and then. You have one of these O-code programs, and I still don't know how, like, well, what the heck language O-code is in, but this actually works just fine, right? So this is my this is my O-code uh, program, and it's this is set speed, right? Set speed .ngc, and you start out with a subroutine, and the first thing I ask is, I said, is the speed greater than 1250? Because that's my cutoff. I think it's a 6,000 speed spindle. I can really only run it at 5,000 just because my power, but uh, I say if it's if the if the if the speed requested is greater than 1250 then i know i'm going to high gear right and so the first thing i do is i see if i ask if the speed is higher than 5000 right if the, if the request is higher than 5000 i say out of bounds i'm not going to give you any speed higher than 5000 i'm not going to try and i i exit the program with this with this um error code speed exceeds rated rpm and then i say okay if I, well, I already know that the speed requested was more than 1250. I ask if it's already in high gear, right? So if, if um, and that is a M66 P12. So let's go back and look that really quick. So there's the, here's our inputs, M66 P12. That's a spindle is high. So if spindle is high, um, or spindle is in high gear is high, right? If it's greater than zero, then I say, okay, go ahead. And then I go check and I just make sure that low gear is false. You don't have to do this, but it seemed like a good a good idea. So basically if the if the pin that says it's on the high side is true and it's pin that says it's on the low side is false, then I say okay and I just say go ahead and tell it to set the speed. And this is where the actual business happens. Speed equals speed. So the speed that I asked for, say it was two thousand, um, you get that up here. Um, you know, oh set speed. If it's you just it basically it sets it to that to that straight speed right let me find it again there we go uh, right there s pound equals speed so then then it sets the speed in there and i'll talk about there's actually a scaling factor that i'll talk about in just a second but let's let's get through this and then i end if now okay now Let's say that the, it was high gear wasn't true. Let's say the high gear was in was in um, was false, right? Well, then it would skip this this section, right? It would skip this this 300 section. It would go here, and then I say, okay, let me check if if low gear if it's in low gear, right? So, if if low gear if the if the low gear is um, M66 P13, let's just go and look one second. M66 P13, of course that's low gear, right? So that makes sense. So if it happens to be in low gear. Right? Then I say, okay, let's make sure again that high gear is false just in case. And then I tell it to stop the spindle. And by the way, the first time I wrote this program, I didn't put this in here and what a pain in the neck. I actually crashed the gears because it, it didn't it didn't know to stop the spindle first, right? So just so I should have done a I should have done a little flow chart and I did not do that. So I stop the spindle and then I check and I wait and make sure that the spindle speed is stopped. And let's look at that. This M sixty six P nine. So let's go over to our to our um, how file that does it so what's p9 well there it is there's a spindle stopped um, signal from the servo controller that's number nine right there and sure enough right so i just make sure that so i said tell, tell it to go to zero i make sure it's stopped and and by the way if it's not i give it uh, four seconds q4 means wait four seconds if it doesn't stop within four seconds i say you know what it's not stopped get out put an error so then i say okay turn off the low because I want to I shift it. Turn off the low gear shift solenoid and turn on the high gear shift solenoid, right? And then wait for 
wait for the low gear to be become false so you know it's 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 in high gear and then i say wait for high gear to be true right and that way i know i'm in high gear and then i can go ahead and set the speed with no scanning factor right so let's go back and just look at that again first thing i do is i i ask myself is the speed in a in a legal range right some of them below five five thousand um and and i make sure that the the requested speed is more than 1250 because that means that it's um it's it's you know in high gear mode and then i check if it's already in high gear i say great just go ahead and go for it and hit that speed if not i say all right make sure that you're in low gear and then stop the spindle wait for it to stop make sure it's stopped and then switch it turn the low gear shift off and turn the high gear shift on and then wait for it make sure it's true and then go ahead and set the speed now let's say that the that the request is for a speed lower than 1250 right then i go to the low gear section right so this is if the speed is lower than 1250.1 right then i say okay well let's um and i want to make sure it's greater than 0.1 make sure that it's there is a speed because i also learned that if the speed is zero that screwed it up and then i make sure make sure it's not in high gear right um so if it is in low gear and not in high gear then i say okay go ahead and set the speed and then i divide by um this the scaling factor 2.56 and that's something i'll show you how i got to that in a second that's an empirically determined number so basically if you ask for a low speed and it is in low gear and it not in high gear then it says just go ahead and set it with the correct scaling factor and then of course think about it, if it's in high gear i say well check if it's in high gear and um and and then you know i go go through and i stop the spindle right right i make sure that the spindle is stopped and then I do the opposite as before. I turn off the high gear shift and turn on the low gear shift. That should shift into low. I check and make sure that high gear is off. I make sure that low gear is is on, right? Or, or you know that the sensors are both right. And then I go ahead and set the set the speed, right? And then um, at the very end, I say, I say if the speed is set to zero, then okay, the speed is set to zero. That's over. So I actually had to do a fair amount of debug for this one, um, just because I just because I'm not very bright. But um, but that's how it worked. And then the way I the way I figured out the, um, the scaling factors is I just measured it. So I went and I got one of these um, I got one of these little testers from Amazon. It's about twenty bucks, and you know, you basically put a little shiny sticker on the spindle, and then every time it goes by, it, it you know the little eye can see it. And it's actually I don't know how accurate it is, but sure it's consistent. So uh, I use this for all my testing. And then what I did, you can see my hand scratch notes here. So if I put the spindle in um, in in uh, one hundred mode. Um, I would actually read the DAC value that came out and um, and look at the actual spindle speed. So in this case, I set it to 100, and the spindle speed was 21. Right? That's not very good. You know, 200 was 175, 300 was 334. I just went in and I did a little scaling factor. I figured out what I needed to scale, and once I figured it out, I go and I set it here. I set it in this um, in the motion uh, PPMC motion uh, file, which is an any file, and this is my this is my 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 spindle speed. So the gain is 0.00. 165 right and like so that's a number i just got i just made empirically um to um uh, to, to make it to make it match so that's that's basically it right it um it really it really worked great if i you know if i show you again this uh, there's a there's a video that i've got on my channel that shows the spindle changing speed but this uh this here's a spindle down here and this you know the gears are in this big big cast iron um beast of a beast of a head and what happens is when i've got these two inputs and two outputs right two inputs are high speed and low speed and the outputs are two um two hydraulic solenoids that that turn it high and low and you know i've got this little logic that says well based on what what speed you asked for let me see what speed it is now let me make sure the speed is legal and then it says okay are you in the right gear if not let me stop the spindle make sure it's stopped and then put it in your right gear and then i and then i and then i go and so actually you know once i had done the um, tool changer this the spindle wasn't too hard uh and the real trick you know for me was to figure out one is the these o programs which are really quite simple once you get them and then also the trick of making sure that you define um you know what the what the hardware software mapping is in the um in the file so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If not, thanks for watching.